if you'll allow me a self-indulgent moment or two. I had some fun tweaking my editing environment uh, this week. I've been editing a lot of LaTeX files, uh, mostly article length things, um, and doing editing of translations. And I've had a lot of the pieces of this workflow sitting around. I've used them all individually, but I've never wired them up from end to end. Um, and doing so was actually pretty cool. I wanted to show it off. Yes, of course, LaTeX can be painful, um, but it doesn't have to be completely painful. Um, and it, using it and using geeky programmer tools like a text editor and Git doesn't mean you can't also have nice things on the front end. It just means you have to work a little bit harder to set them up. Um, so I worked a little bit to set this up and the result was pretty cool. Um, you've seen uh, live preview panes for things like uh, Markdown. It's pretty common in uh, text editors these days. Also for web UI front end stuff, uh, live preview of um, stuff you're coding is pretty common. Um, but it doesn't often translate back to technologies like LaTeX. Actually, uh, quite a number of editors have one-click compile and preview functions, but for one thing, one-click is not live, um, and later editors just suck. I'm sorry. But I actually wanted to take this a step beyond live preview. Uh, when I'm programming, uh, usually what I'm one thing that I'm watching live is a um, loop that's running a diff. Um, so I see a uh, diff of what I've done since the last commit um, pretty much at all times. And it's um, a great part of programming workflow, but uh, I also want to use it in my editing workflow, largely because it's what I'm used to and I fi find it very productive. Um, I use uh, Vim for everything, uh, most recently uh, NeoVim, but for the purposes of this demonstration, it could be almost any edit editor that you're comfortable with. Um, even if you don't have the plugins to do exactly this thing, you can wire up other pieces to take its place. So let's show you uh, what it looks like. Uh, here we have my editor open, and there's no video editing magic happening here. This is just what's going on. Um, and I'm not going to be saving. I have no key bindings for save here that you're not going to see. Um, so let's say I started editing this file, and you know the sentence needs to go down here. Um, that word doesn't belong. Missing something in there. That word was spelled wrong. Um, and this is just uh, a copy and paste of some text that's not actually mine, so don't expect it to make any sense. Even if you did speak Turkish, I'm mangling parts of Genesis right now. But as you can see, my preview, if you will, it's actually a complete PDF um, generated by LaTeX is updating on the fly. Uh, maybe that actually needed to be two paragraphs, and that sentence could be patched onto that one. Again, yank a word. You can see or get on-the-fly updates for editing LaTeX. Now, it's a little bit behind. Um, it's about a second behind, usually. Depends on the length of the document. Article-length stuff works pretty well. Book-length stuff does not work very well. Uh, but if you have your LaTeX stuff split up into files by chapter or um, other reasonable amounts, um, it can actually be done pretty reasonably. Um, but uh, so uh, part of my uh, Git workflow is then uh, that it's because what's happening here is there's a live uh, save going on. Um, there's an auto save that's saving on every edit to the um, current buffer. Uh, what happens is your file space becomes your scratch space. But because I'm using git anyway, uh, I'm using the git staging area um, to do my diffs with. Um, so basically, the git staging area becomes the new save. Save goes away, um, and then commit, of course, is where the real business happens. Um, since I'm using uh, the Fugitive plugin uh, for Vim, uh, I can actually write to the staging area. So I haven't been doing any file saves here. That's been happening um, in the background. Um, but we do want to occasionally do a write, and the write is going to shove that into the staging area so that everything I've done now has been approved. And if I go on editing, uh, take out that word, but that's in there. And it's now diffing based on where uh, the staging area is at versus the working directory. 
So uh, to show you what's going on behind the scenes here, um, there's a, I've got a um, make running um, that's running a watch. It's using iNotify wait to catch file system events. Um, so the file system events, of course, are generated by Vim plugin that's doing auto save. Um, so any changes to the active buffer, um, it's pushing out to the file system. Um, those are getting caught by the iNotify wait loop, um, which checks and makes sure it's a text file. And I've actually got a filter on it so that I, if I have more than one text file open, I don't go back and forth between them. Um, then a little bit of magic happens with git plumbing. Um, so I've got an alias in here. Um, that alias is defined in my git config as uh, running the special uh, uh, third-party diff tool. That third-party diff tool is set up here, and it's a copy of uh, latex diff. Um, but the interesting thing that's actually happening here is because uh, diff is generating the data to pass to latex diff, um, it's able to do that based on the git staging area. Um, if you wanted to do it um, based on the last commit, you could change this um, to be um, doing a diff on your between your working directory and your um, cache instead of uh, your stage. Um, sorry, not cache. Cache is the same thing um, against your um, previous commit um, instead of the um, staging area. Um, so latex diff gen takes two file inputs, um, which Git just generated for us, and does the markup uh, to generate another latex file that has uh, what you're seeing is a fancy markup here, additions and removals um, marked up on a word by word basis. Um, so after um, that's generated, then goes on, uh, of course, compiles uh, that diff f file. Then it, uh, I I'm running uh, MUPDF to show the preview uh, for two reasons. One, I can trigger the uh, disk reads manually. Um, a lot of PDF editors will actually catch this automatically, but that also means they catch broken in-between states when the file isn't done writing um, or it's been emptied and it's a bogus um, PDF. Um, so MUPDF, I can uh, manually tell it to reload the file from disk. And also um, the updates happen with no screen flicker. Uh, so as you edit, this is fun, making stuff up. None of this stuff actually goes here, of course. Um, and it works in insert mode too, so I could write, add some more text in here. Again, it's a second or so behind, um, but it is actually um, giving us output as we go. Hope you enjoyed, have some fun with Leite, and get a real editor. <laughs>